Welcome back to The Graham Stephan Show. My name is Graham and welcome to my show. And I gotta say, I love watching videos like this one that have never normally come across my phone screen or my computer screen. Like this never came up for me for some reason, but it was because of you guys all sending me this exact same video saying, Graham, we need you to react to this. We want you to see this video. And after a few people send me this, I'm like, you know what, yeah, I gotta see this, I agree, it looks pretty good. It's from none other than Trisha Paytas, and the title is, What I Spend in a Week as a Millionaire Living in Los Angeles. And you know what, like, what a coincidence, I am also a millionaire living in Los Angeles. And the funny thing is, this was my original title when I made my own video on the main channel, What I Spend in a Week as a Millionaire, but I took out the Los Angeles part because for some reason it didn't get a lot of views and I didn't want people to think it's too specific to Los Angeles because for some reason anytime I mention a specific place in a title, just it bombs. The entire video just gets no views, people don't click on it, they don't care about if it's Los Angeles or New York or Florida, all they care about is What I Spend in a Week, Millionaire. That's it. So in this video, we're gonna be watching Trisha Paytas and seeing how much money she is spending. And you already know this is gonna be a good video because she's in Los Angeles, she's a millionaire, she's in her beautiful backyard with a pool overlooking, it looks like Beverly Hills or the Hollywood Hills, could also be Bel Air. I can't really tell for sure. My guess though is it's probably the Hollywood Hills. But anyway, let's get into the video and see what she spends as a week as a millionaire in Los Angeles. Wait for it. Trisha paid us money. What it, whatever it is. I don't know. Let's start the video. Hey guys, what is up? So today I'm going to be doing that widely popular trend of what I spent in a week as a 31 year old living in Los Angeles. Now, I feel like as a 31 year old, I have a lot more responsibilities. You just start spending stuff on like furniture, like floors cleaned and getting brake pads and like that kind of stuff. So yeah, I guess that's the thing when you're 31 years old. It's just you spend a lot of money on furniture. Maybe one week you're like, you know what? I, I need a chair. I need some place to sit down. And the other week, you know what? I need a table to eat off of. And then the next day it's like, Damn, I need brake pads. Say that's that's being an adult unfortunately, and that's only specific to 31 year olds in Los Angeles who are millionaires. If you're not that then you don't have to worry about those expenses. All right, so right away, I see I have a Capital One payment, $462. I don't have the craziest credit card limit because I used to have really bad credit and I had to like work with like a credit repair person. What is she spending $462 a month on a phone bill? Does she have like four burner iPhones that she's selling stuff on the side and like untraceable with unlimited data and she's financing like multiple iPhone Pro 11s. Like how do you ever get a $462 month phone? I have never seen a $462 phone payment in my life. I used to like pay car payments on like really fancy cars so I could pay it off. Like I paid off a Lamborghini, I paid off a G-Wagon. I... When you pay off really expensive cars, it really helps your credit. So, so $462 spent. You know what, quick tidbit here, but yeah, it does actually end up helping to have like multiple types of car loans and leases that you're gonna pay off in full. It does end up helping. So from a credit perspective, sometimes going and taking out an auto loan for you know a few months or whatever is going to end up helping your credit score in the long run. Okay, I just ordered Domino today for $15.86. It was really delicious. I have no regrets about that. I spent a lot on food, you'll see. You know what? I would actually say that's a pretty decent deal for Domino's. And like, you always have leftovers. Like, there's no way any reasonable human could eat the entire, like, medium sized pizza. So, at the very least, usually a medium sized pizza for me is like three meals. So, I, you know, for 15 bucks, three meals, decent. Bevmo, this beverage is more than $363 on alcohol. We're having a little bit of a Christmas party tonight. So, $363 on alcohol. Who are you? Who are you getting drunk? Who's drinking that much? I have never, even, even for like events, if I've hosted a little thing at my place, maybe I spend like $30 and you just get the cheap stuff. Like really no one cares. And they show up and they're getting something for free. No one is tasting the difference between Popov and Grey Goose. As far as I'm concerned, they're the exact same thing. Postmates $113, Postmates $73. What did I order that was happening? I don't even know. Why is spending so much money on Postmates? This is already just ridiculous. Now, then again, I gotta say, she's probably making bank. You know, she is probably someone, if I'm gonna guess, uh, the low end. I mean, without her even trying, she's making at minimum 500 grand a year. And that's if she just wakes up in the morning and just does like the bare minimum effort. I think if she really pushes for it, she's probably making more like one to one and a half million dollars a year. I'm gonna, I'm gonna guess, I could be totally off here. So I mean, her spending is not unreasonable for someone making over a million dollars a year, but, it, but still, you, you gotta question why the need to spend so much? Selfridges 781, I got the Fendi Moon Boots. I found them at Selfridges, they did not 
don't have them at Fendi, so I had to do a little Google search. Found them at Selfridges. Hopefully, they get here before my trip. Oh man, almost eight hundred dollars for shoes. Just Trisha, what? You could be investing so much money. It would be so easy to cut out like half of these charges and then just invest. I would love to hear something about like, oh yeah, that was my four hundred one k contribution. Here's my down payment to money. Oh yeah, this I threw an Ally Bank because I'm going to be making some big index fund moves. And, like. It needs to be something like that. 350 is glam, makeup, Fendi. Ooh, $3,164 at Fendi. Oh, that's just stupid though. Why would you spend that much money at Fendi? Just go, you could buy like, if you're, if you're gonna buy designer, you could just, just Poshmark, just, just go and get it used. You can get the same stuff. No one is ever gonna know, but now you bought it at like 25% of the price. This. I'm hoping, I'm hoping she's writing this off. I don't know if she could write it off. I'm hoping it's like for a YouTube video or a stunt or like something she's doing and she's able to just write that off as an expense. But otherwise, this is just, this is just beyond what, in my opinion, would be reasonable. I love how she's acting all surprised. It's like, oh yeah, you know, she's just doing it for the camera because there's no way you're walking into Fendi and thinking to yourself, oh, you know, I shouldn't be spending this. I might regret this later. I bet she's just doing it because the average person watching her, like, you know, like even like me, can't possibly comprehend ever spending more than like $3,000 on, on what Fendi is, clothes, you know? <sighs> anyway. Mirror Mirror is a photo booth that the Kardashians use for all their parties. It's $4,000 and you get these black and white photos. We're using it tonight. I hope it's worth it and I hope you see lots of photos and I hope they get lots of likes because, okay. Okay, so that one I could at least see as a business write-off, but still you have to question like, you're spending $4,000 and sure that might be a write-off so it's really more like $2,000 effectively after taxes, but even then, are you really gonna get the ROI of $2,000? At least for me, it's like you could get the same pictures just with your iPhone. Just, just take selfie pictures with the iPhone. You can make them black and white just as easily, just as proof right now. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take a picture, I'll show you what I could do. Uh, in instead of spending $4,000, I'm gonna take this picture right here. Watch this, smash the like button. Black and white, there you go. I just saved a few thousand dollars, just like that. Dior 1,600, wow. This was all yesterday and today. I thought we're talking about the entire month here. I thought we've gone through like a month's worth of expenses. We're, we're in like two days. Apple, that's $10. I don't know, that's like a recurring one. I don't even know what that's for. Recurring ones will get you. Oh yeah, you definitely gotta watch out for those recurring $9 a month charges while you're out there spending $3,000 at Fendi. It's like death by a thousand cuts, you know? It's, it's not the big one that's gonna do it. It's all little tiny ones. JCPenney, $4,550. How much is this, you guys? Have I spent over $30,000 in two days? I needed a mattress from JCPenney. She spent $30,000 in two days. How much money is she making? How much money is she making that she doesn't have to question $30,000 in two? Like, I go to the grocery store, and if, if my bill is more than like, 45. I'm thinking to myself, how else am I gonna cut back? What else needs to be sacrificed so I don't have to feel bad about spending $45 on, on groceries for like, you know, two weeks or whatever? That is just absurd. Victoria's Secret also needed underwear. Did I need $909 worth of underwear? I'm physically feeling kind of sick about this. I've been trying to save money. How do you wear $900 worth of underwear? Are you just basically soiling your underwear every day and then just throwing them out? Is that what you do? I don't, I don't, I can't even comprehend, like, let alone a hundred, but a, 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 almost a thousand dollars. You know it's serious when I just get quiet, because I don't know what to say. Front gate was $900, but I really needed these light up balls from my pool. This sounds so bad. Oh my God. I don't think I am a 31 year old. I think I'm a child. I think I'm an 11 year old child that thinks they have daddy's credit card. And I'm not 11. I definitely don't have daddy's credit card. And I definitely am going into deeper debt. Wait a second, if she's actually going to debt, Trisha, if you're watching this by any means, or if you guys are watching this, if you want Trisha on the show, I would gladly, I will go and travel to her. I will go to the Hollywood Hills, we'll sit down, we'll go over these expenses, we'll come up with a budget, we'll find a way for her to save a lot of money and stash away so much of this, because at this level of spending, I mean, she could easily be worth like 10 or 20 million dollars, and you know, the, in the foreseeable future, just by saving and investing a lot of this just discretionary spending, it's ridiculous. AV crew is 15 thousand dollars that's towards my music video budget not my music video budget not even close just 
trying to live out my pop star dreams. Wow, at least the $15,000 though would be seen as an investment in yourself. So that I could kind of understand that you might be able to see an ROI from that. DoorDash, $21, Amazon, $30, Top Tech, $148, The Boiling Crab, $130 for a seafood boy. All these checks, maybe to my sister, employees, bills. Uh, Sweet Serenity Desserts, $339. Lots of hair and makeup. I'm trying to stockpile before the holiday season. Arby's, $25. Baskin Robbins, $24. I love Baskin Robbins. They gave me a tummy ache. I just had some for lunch. Okay, I'm shocked how she could afford this. I really like, in, unless she's making way more money than I've ever imagined, and she's writing all of this off, or maybe she's making a lot of money and then spending all of it. Maybe I've got her all wrong. Maybe she's making like three, four million dollars a year. And for her, I mean, you know, so what? You, you know, you make three million dollars a year, you spend a mil and a half of that. You're still saving a lot, but I don't even know what to say with this. I really am at a loss for words. He's $618. That's beauty products. I got a lot of self tanner, a lot of eyelashes, and that's pretty much all I got. We got Amazon, we got a therapy bill of $300. You know what, yeah, I'm gonna need some therapy after seeing this. Some of you guys have noticed that you know, my hair is starting to thin a little bit. It's, it's because stuff like this stresses me out. I get stressed out when I see people blowing this amount of money and I'm just like sitting here just like, don't, no, don't do it. And I'm yelling at the screen and the stress is just, my hair is falling out now. Let it be known that it is the month of December. So I put a lot more work, money, effort into my videos, my music videos. It's Vlogmas month. I wanted to make higher quality videos for my channel. Wait, is Vlogmas a thing? I have never heard, like I, I love YouTube. Like I am obsessed with, I had no idea Vlogmas was there and like you have to spend a lot of money because it's it's Vlogmas. Now I do get it though, at the end of the year you typically wanna make a lot of your charges there so you could write it off in that calendar year. So maybe that's some of it, but but still, that's, that's a lot of money. Okay, so let's be responsible Trish for a second as I am 31 and I've had quite a bit of trouble before in the past. I've had my accounts somewhat frozen. I've had my accounts drained from not paying taxes quick enough. Um, so definitely be sure to stay on your taxes definitely put at least half aside for taxes. That's very aggressive, but uh, a lot of people tell you like 30%, but I always put 50% because there's always unexpected costs that come up in life. And so that 50% like pocket usually ends up going down to 10% for me because I end up spending like 40% of that little like savings of the year. Yeah, you know, I tend to agree with her on that. If you're self-employed and you have to pay self-employment taxes and Medicare and Social Security, 50%, believe it or not, is it, it is reasonable. Like right now for me, my top tier tax bracket is over 50%. That means like about 55 cents of every $1 is not even mine. It just, it goes to, it's, it's gone. It goes to the IRS. That only means I keep only about 45 cents for every $1 that I make in the top tier tax bracket, you know? So 50%, in my opinion, is reasonable for people who are self-employed and want to make sure they're never caught in a position where they don't have enough money to pay the IRS. You, you always want to pay the IRS. You never want to mess with them. I just thought this was a really fun trend and I just realized like I did spend a lot and all jokes aside, like I do need to work on my spending and for 2020, I definitely want to work on not spending as much. Yeah, you know what, Trisha, if you actually want to do a serious like sit down and go over your budget and your expenses and figure out a plan and a way for you to save and invest a considerable portion of how much money you're making. I'd be more than happy to do that. Even by the way, if it's not on YouTube, if you just want to do it privately, just honestly let me know. I would be completely down to help out. Just no charge, no nothing. If, if you want it to be recorded for YouTube, I'd be more than happy to do that. And if not, no worries at all. Just reach out to me on Instagram. And I think this would be a helpful, just cool experiment that we could try this, see if it works, figure out ways to optimize this. Again, if you're interested, no pressure whatsoever, but uh, I, I have no idea if you're going to see this. So if anyone wants to bring this to our attention, I'd be more than happy to help. But again, just the offer is on the table. If you want it, there it is. And I'm never going to mention it ever again, unless you're interested. I think it's a good goal for all of us to have, especially if you're a spender like me and have the emotional attachment to spending. But anyways, if you guys like this video, thumbs up. Tell me what other trends, even if I miss them out in 2019, tell me what other trends I should be doing. And I'll see you in the next video. See, that I would say is the problem right there is to have an emotional attachment towards spending. And that's where people get into a lot of trouble. Sometimes it's just out of boredom. Sometimes it's just to temporarily feel better. You get that dopamine hit by going and getting something new and temporarily feeling that boost. And then it goes down and you need to spend more money to get that same feeling. It's, it's honestly, it's a drug just like anything else, just like gambling or alcohol or, or really doing anything to an extreme. To get that dopamine spike is a very true thing when it comes to spending and, and finding a way to break that and finding other things to fill your time instead is a task and it does take work. So I get it where she's coming from. It's just once you start on that path, it's 
hard to get off of it and then save. Ideally, we would like to get in the mindset of having that same sort of enjoyment over saving or instead of going and spending $3,000 on shoes, you would spend $3,000 on Tesla stock and you could still buy stuff, but you're buying stuff that will end up making you more money and then whatever more money you make, I mean, feel free to go and spend it. You know, my philosophy is you could spend whatever you want as long as your investments can pay for it. That's it. As long as your investments pay for whatever you want to buy, feel free, be my guest, and you'll never run out of money, which is the most important. I'm going to guess, yeah, I'm going to guess here it's D. It's, it's probably the highest amount possible. Let's see if I'm right. And I was right. So, uh, so yeah, I mean, I mean, this is absolutely a train wreck. And there's no way for me to sugarcoat it. I mean, to spend $46,000, you know, a lot in discretionary spending. But let's even say half of that is for business. Okay, let's just say half of that. You're still spending $20,000 a week on purely discretionary spending just because you kind of feel like it or out of boredom or just because it makes you feel good or whatever the reason might be. That's a, that's a lot of money. That's like $80,000 a month, not including business expenses. I'm talking about just purely discretionary, just, you know, what do I do today? Let me, let me, let me spend money today. Like that, that's what I'm, $80,000 a month. You realize how much wealth you could build if you just invest the $80,000 a month instead. Even we just cut it down to half, even just, just blow 40 grand a month, you know, just blow $40,000 a month and you could still grow a considerable amount of wealth in the future. And one other big recommendation that she should absolutely do is to use the link down below in the description and we will give her two free stocks when she deposits $100 in the platform. One of the stocks is gonna be valued up to $1,400. So again, if you want those two free stocks, ooh, all you gotta do is use that link down below in the description and enjoy your two free stocks. No, but seriously though, um, Trisha, if you would want to talk about your finances and go over your income and your expenses, like I would love to do this. Again, we, we could separate YouTube entirely from this. We don't need to film it. If you want to, we can absolutely do it. I think it would be educational, but if not, no worries whatsoever. We can keep it entirely confidential. I, in fact, won't even mention it. If you don't even want me to mention it, we could just do it completely privately on the side. Let me know if that's something you're interested in. And for everyone else, continue sending me the videos that you want me to see and react to. And if enough of you send it, of course, I'm going to react to it. So with that said, you guys, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. As always, destroy the like button, subscribe button, notification bell, add me on Instagram. I post it pretty much daily. So if you want to be a part of it there, feel free to add me there. And then also for anyone interested, I'm now doing a weekly mentorship program. We meet every single single Sunday morning, 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. So if you're interested in joining that group, the link is down below in the description. And then uh, what else do I need to pitch at the end of the uh, two free stocks, Weeble, Use that, 100 bucks, two free stocks, one up to you know $1,400, yada, yada, yada. Anyway, with that said, you guys, thank you so much for watching, and until next time.